Good morning, everybody. 8.30, a little after 8.30, 8.30 on our Friday. Happy Friday to you. Thanks for stopping by and talk tropics. I am pulling up your comments so I can see what all of you have to say this morning so we can talk a little bit, answer your questions, and try to get a better understanding of what's going on with Tropical Depression 13 and anything else that's out there. So I see a few of you have already commented. Good morning. Shelly, good morning. Hi. Good to have you here. And uh, see a lot of you joining in. So it looks like we've already got a good crowd here this morning. So I don't want to waste any of your time. Let's go ahead and get right to it. So we've got three systems out there, right? You, you've probably realized this by now. Tropical Depression 14 to the west. That's in the western Caribbean right now. Actually very close to... Uh, Central America, and then you've got TD-13, which is just east of the Leeward Islands. By just east, I mean about 250, 300 miles to the east. And then a third tropical wave, which actually, as of the 8 o'clock tropical outlook from the Hurricane Center, now looking less likely that it develops. So that's good news there. Let me put that full screen for you so we can start talking about what we have um, immediately going on out there. So there's a hurricane hunter flying around in Tropical Depression 13 right now. Hurricane Hunter found a couple of interesting things, uh, one of which is that it, it found some wind speeds that suggested they are up around 70 miles per hour. I'll show you that in just a second. But it's also finding what seems to be a, an organizing and a strengthening system. Also, another Hurricane Hunter mission flying in Tropical Depression 14 right now. So there's actually two Hurricane Hunters flying in two separate systems right now. So this is Tropical Depression 13. You see how it shows there? It found a wind speed report of 72 miles per hour. I actually uh, was speaking with one of the ground support meteorologists for this flight, and uh, and he made an interesting observation saying that that observation was when there was really, really heavy rainfall. And they're, they're starting to think that maybe that's not an accurate observation. However, some of the other observations that they found is that wind speeds potentially could be up there around 45 miles per hour in this storm so they will continue to fly we'll get another update uh, a change in the track as well an updated track forecast at 11 o'clock so i would not be surprised if we find that tropical storm laura has developed uh, by the 11 o'clock advisory so be looking out for that as the system continues to move to the west northwest at around 21 miles per hour so it's moving fairly quickly right now and it will likely continue at that speed, probably slow down a little bit over the weekend. But the general track right now takes it north of the islands of the Caribbean. Now, obviously, that's good for the folks down through Puerto Rico and Hispaniola. However, if the storm does track over the islands, especially Hispaniola and Cuba, that would mean more land interaction and that would mean potential weakening of the storm. Right now, the forecast takes it over very warm waters there north of the Caribbean. And those warm waters is nothing but fuel for a strengthening system, especially as it gets into the Florida Straits. And that's where we see it go from a tropical storm up to a hurricane. Now, the timing of this is going to be over the next four to five days. Here's the actual track without those sea surface temperatures on there. You see the timing for it to strengthen from a tropical storm to a hurricane probably happens through the day on Monday, at which point it would likely be just off the coast of Florida when it strengthens to a hurricane. Now, does it move over Florida or how close does it get? There's still quite a bit of uncertainty. Uh, the cone of uncertainty, right? That is the area where the center of the storm could track based upon historical forecast error. So let me say that a different way. This cone of uncertainty basically says, okay, the Hurricane Center thinks the storm is going to be right here. Uh, come Tuesday morning. However, based on historical or forecasts in the past, there is a radius of error that extends well beyond where the center of that storm is forecast to be. So that just means that that center of the storm could track anywhere where that cone is, and the impacts could be outside, potentially, of that. It depends on where the storm tracks, and that's something that we still don't have a ton of confidence in. And I think we know a lot more once this system becomes a tropical storm and we know whether or not it's going to have impact with Hispaniola and it's going to interact with the land and potentially weaken. But the, the latest forecast models, and let me show you the latest forecast models here. 
These are the spaghetti models. I know you guys are familiar with that. But there has been a general shift to the south, right? So a southerly shift means two things for us. It means that you could have more interaction or more of a possibility of interaction with the land over Hispaniola. But it also means that the track would be farther away from, from Tampa Bay and southwest Florida. So there are some things to take away from that. It, it could still certainly track through the Florida Straits. Even if it does have a little bit of an interaction with Hispaniola, it could still jog to the north, find some of those warmer waters, and then track through the Florida Straits, maybe even having landfall in the Keys, and then head out into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Now, yeah, some of these models you know, saying they could come up our way. I don't think that that's true. I think that those are outliers. I think we're going to lean more towards uh, the general track that would bring it through the eastern Gulf of Mexico and then up toward the Florida Panhandle, kind of in the area of where Michael went uh, a couple years ago. So that's the, that's the latest trend is for more of a southerly track. In fact, I'm going to switch back over to the latest forecast track from the Hurricane Center. And they noted in their discussion, when, and they, they issue a discussion every time they put out a forecast to let us meteorologists know what their thinking is. And they shifted the track slightly to the south to account for the latest forecast models uh, suggesting that suddenly shifts. So the Hurricane Center is buying into that idea that the storm is leaning more towards a, a south and a, a westerly track away from Tampa Bay. Now, that doesn't mean that we won't see impacts here in Tampa Bay. Just because the center of the storm is moving farther away from us, it could still be a fairly large storm in which point it could have you know, farther reaching impacts. So given the current forecast, now obviously this is going to change as we start to get a little bit more details with it, but given the current forecast, it looks like Tampa Bay and the Tampa Bay area, so that includes southwest Florida, could still receive tropical storm force winds as early as Monday evening. So if we have to start doing these preparations, which now is kind of the planning phase, right? Just sit and wait and watch. But if we have to start getting things moving towards you know, rolling out our hurricane plan, everything should probably be wrapped up by Monday, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And then those tropical storm force winds arrive through Monday evening, and we could be dealing with a brief period of tropical storm conditions potentially into Tuesday as well. But, you know, all that said, the probability or, or the chance of that happening right now is relatively low. When you look at this here, we've got... Tampa has a 16% chance of receiving tropical storm force winds. Fort Myers, obviously, higher. And then Key West has that 40% that chance of tropical storm force winds arriving into the day on Monday. But you still have the strongest probability of tropical storm force winds out over the Gulf of Mexico. So that's what a south and a westerly track would give us would be more of those impacts farther offshore and less and less of an impact for us here in Tampa Bay. So here's where we stand as of 847 on Friday morning. Uh, it is forecast to become a hurricane off of our coast. Um, forecast probably becomes a hurricane through the day on Monday. If not before, some forecast models do have it become a, a hurricane on Sunday. And I do think those are outliers. But it's possible, and we have to consider some of those forecast models that buy into the idea of more of a rapid intensification through the Florida Straits Saturday into Sunday. But even given that, the, the worst of the conditions likely would be here in Tampa Bay Monday night, overnight Monday, into the day on Tuesday, and probably starting to move out Tuesday night into Wednesday. So that would be... I think we could say that the scenario that we're looking at for that time period and then moving out Wednesday and hopefully all, all said and done with by Thursday. But like I mentioned, there's, there's still some un uncertainty in that longer, longer range forecast, that, that three, four, five day forecast because of the fact that we don't know exactly where that center of the storm is going to track and how much interaction it's going to have with the land and you know, how long it takes to get organized. It will eventually get organized. It's just a question of how long does it take to get organized, at which point then how much time does it have to develop. So 
that's where we are pretty much right now. Let me show you real quick. Uh, tropical depression 14. It is still a depression. Still has winds of 35 miles per hour, so no big update with that. It's moving a little bit slower to the west northwest at 12 miles per hour. This system is also forecast to become a hurricane, which is going to be pretty interesting to potentially have two hurricanes in the Gulf of Mexico at the same time. And uh, I think I have a graphic here that shows both of those tracks at the same time. There we go. So that's what we could be working with. Uh, Tropical Depression 13, so the one over here, the one that we would be watching, that would be maybe about 15 to 20 hours behind Tropical Depression 14, but you could still have two hurricanes in the Gulf of Mexico at the same time. Now, there's starting to be this, this idea that if these two storms get close enough to each other in the central Gulf of Mexico, that they could sort of pull on each other. This effect or this phenomenon is called the Fujiwara effect, where they, if they get within roughly 900 miles of each other, they sort of they pull on each other, and they're. Let me see if I can find this graph here. Get it to the right on this. So you could have a potential pull to the west for what would be TD or what is TD 14, which, depending on the timing of it, could be Tropical Storm Laura, and then maybe. Marco, Hurricane Marco, would get pulled like that. So maybe pulled more to the northeast, and then this one gets pulled to the northwest, and then that would bring the impacts more consolidated to the central Gulf Coast. It's, it's still kind of up in the air, obviously, with, with our lack of confidence in that longer-range forecast, but it's still an interesting thing to, to theorize and talk about it. So uh, I think that that's the basics of the update. Um, I'm going to scroll through real quick and look at some of your comments here. Um, let's see here. See a lot of you just checking in and saying thanks for the updates. Um, let's see, Natalie Carpenter saying it's going to be one of those hurricanes that strengthens quickly. Remember when we thought Irma was supposed to be a cat? Yeah, so it could strengthen quickly. And that's a, a real possibility, something that we got to watch close to. But guys, that's that's the update for now. I've got to close this down and get ready for our next update on TV. So thanks for tuning in. And of course, we'll have more updates, as always, on our Facebook page, as well as Tampa Bay and TampaBay.com, as well as our app. So make sure you download that. Guys, have a good morning. Stay safe. Stay updated with this storm. And we'll make sure to pass along any updates as they come down. Guys, Stay safe. Stay healthy. And have a good Friday. Enjoy your weekend.